Hello, my name is Pastor Joel Silverman. We thank you for watching the Regeneration broadcast. It is our hope that you would be enriched in the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Enjoy this message and may God richly bless you. So bless the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Joel. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about the rewards of our testings, because the last few weeks we've been focusing on faith. Last week we focused on a faith that is tested. We talked about how our faith literally needs to be tested before it actually becomes faith. And so God knows all of these things. He prepares all these things, as we even just heard such a wonderful word of knowledge, that God is making us ready for the things he has in store for us. He's been faithful to us all along. So let's just bow our head. Father, we pray for the Holy Spirit to do a deep work within each and every one of us. Lord, we all need this word. We all need it, Lord God, that you would give us an eternal perspective, a God perspective, of who we are, what we're going through, and the truth that you walk alongside of us through every situation and will bring us out on the side of victory. In Jesus' name, we just proclaim it. Amen. Amen. So let's look at our first PowerPoint if we can. This is, if you remember last week, from Pastor Rick Warren. He said, knowing how important our faith is to God, we need to understand that over the course of our lives, he will allow tests of faith to show us areas of our weakness, distrust, or unbelief that is still operating within our hearts. God continually tests people's character, faith, obedience, love, integrity, and loyalty, and I'm sure a whole lot more. Words like trials, temptations, refining, and testing occur more than 200 times in the Bible. So the people of God are a people that are tested. Our faith has to be tested. And we need to always keep in mind God is not the author of evil in any which way, but he knows that this world we live in is fallen. Uh, we are people that are birthed in sin. The world we live in is sinful. And so things are going to happen in life that are going to test the faith of Christ that is within each and every one of us. And he's going to use these things, and we're going to talk about it today, in very, very wonderful way. So we need to understand that we don't see these things in us. We don't see the distrust. We don't see the areas of weakness. We think we're doing pretty good in the Lord. I know every time I've gone through a test, and by the time it's over and ended, I say, that's it. You know, it's done, it's over, and I've arrived. But that is not the case. We're not arriving. We're in the process of arriving. But arrived will be when we meet the Lord face to face. And so God knows all these things that are within us. And he knows that they trip us up in our faith. They cause us to stumble at times and to really struggle uh, as we go through the testings of life. He wants our walk to line up with our words. Easy to talk the talk, not so easy to walk the walk. The reality check is that the depth of your character and your maturity level is going to be measured in a trial. Amen. That's where your, your real character is going to come forth. And the pressure that that trial creates upon us. Because when the squeeze comes on, what is inside of us does come out. Can we all say amen? Amen. In both the Old and New Testaments, the word translated test means to prove by trial. That's literally what a test means. Therefore, when God tests his children, his purpose is to prove that our faith is real. He's not against us. He's proving something. Not that God needs to prove it to himself, since he knows, obviously, all things. But he's proving it to us, that our faith is real, that we are truly his children and that no trial will overtake us as we press into him and we turn to him in every trial that we have to face. Life may turn out differently than we thought it would. I'm sure we could all say, oh yeah, but our faith in Christ will stand. That is the word of our testimony, is what Christ has done in each and every one of us. And he will do everything to keep that faith within us strong, secure, and actually growing. Let's look at our next PowerPoint. So 1 Peter 1, 7 tells us these trials 
will show that your faith is what? Genuine. See, it has to be tested to be proven true. It's like anything in life. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. And that day is coming. You know, as we were singing that song this morning, Shout to the Lord, it was such a beautiful song. And that day is coming. These are not just words that we're singing, blah, 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 blah. That day is actually coming. We're going to see mountains and, and the, the oceans themselves literally bring praise to God Almighty. It will come. We will see it. But in the meantime, all of us as believers are going to face different trials of all kinds and shapes, and especially when we let the light of Christ shine in the dark world we live in. I was speaking with somebody the other day, and they were having a, a really difficult time, persecution on their job, and it was all about their belief in the Lord. And so we need to understand these things are real now, right? I'm sure many of you could say, oh yeah, I've been there, done that. Every day, it seems, there's a target on us because we believe in Christ. And it's okay. It's okay because the Lord is with us. We need to understand that trials and testings are a part of our Christian walk. We learned last week that they are teaching us perseverance and endurance. They are part of a refining process God is using to remove our impurities so that one day when we meet him, we will be prepared to meet Christ face to face. I want us to think about that. We, we, get, we lose sight of that sometimes. You know, many people after last week's sermon came to me and said, why do we forget so quickly about our faith in the Lord? Why is that so easy for us to forget and get caught up in just the everyday thing? And we could all say, yeah, that really does happen. It happens to every one of us. But we need to think about the fact that one day we will see Christ. We will stand before him. Let's look at our next PowerPoint. It tells us this in Jude. Uh, there's just one chapter in verses 24, 25. Jude says, now to him who is able to keep you without stumbling or slipping or falling, and to present you unblemished, blameless, and faultless before the presence of his glory, in triumphant joy and exultation with unspeakable ecstatic delight. Think about this. What you're going through now is preparing you for heaven. The things that are in all of us now that are not godly, God is going to work on as we walk through our day-to-day -day life. Look what that word says. He is able to keep you. You're not keeping yourself. He is able to keep you. But he's going to present you unblemished, blameless, and faultless. And look at the ending of that. To the one only God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, be glory, splendor, splendor. This is who he is, majesty, might, and dominion, and power, and authority before all time, now and forever, unto all the ages of eternity. That's who we will stand before. The one who is almighty, majestic, has dominion over all things. All of heaven is worshiping him as we sit here today. All of heaven bows down before him constantly because he's so magnificent that all they can do is worship him and honor him and thank him and give him praise and give him glory because that's who he is. We just have this little, little smidgen of who God is. But you know, that scripture is very dear to my heart because my own dad, when he was 84 years old, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I'm going to make him ready to stand before my presence. And I thought, wow, think about it. You know, we all say the presence of the Lord, but to stand before God Almighty, the creator of all the heavens and all the earth, think about that. Think about that. And I was in awe. And this was the verse that the Lord gave me. 
He said, I am preparing him. And within a year, the Lord took my father home. And he had to walk through trials, just of his age at that point. He was 84, almost 85. And God was walking him, making him ready to prepare him to stand before the Lord. We are not going to stand before the Lord with our selfishness and our, our uh, idiosyncrasies and, you know, this one did that to me and I don't like this and, you know, this is a pain in my neck. You know, imagine standing before God, the almighty king. And we as believers can stand before him without fear because of what? Jesus. Because of what? Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Only the blood of Jesus. When we stand before the Lord, the Lord is not going to say, Oh, I'm so happy you were a pastor, Carol. I'm so happy you did tenderhearted all those years. I'm so happy you've counseled nine million people through the years. He is not, he's not impressed by that one bit. Because that's his gift in me. I should be using that gift to bring him glory. Shame on me and all of us if we don't use the gifts of God within us. That's not my gift, it's his gift. And he wants his gifts brought forward. But he is not impressed with those things because they're his. They belong to him. He's just endowed you with it for a period of time to see how are you going to use that gift. Are you taking the glory on yourself? Are you saying, oh, look at who I am, what I did? Or are you saying, this is what Jesus has done in me. This is what he can do in you, the same thing. So we need to understand in this lifetime now, in your life now, and what you're walking through now is all preparation for heaven. And we're going to talk about because there are rewards coming from what we're going through. So God has purpose in our trials. Think about it. What you're faced with today God has a purpose in. The person who's driving you nuts today, God has a purpose in. That person that you say, I can't take this one more day, God has divine purpose in. So we have to remember that 1 Peter 1.7 is telling us that just as gold is heated in fire, the impurities rise to the top. That's what happens to us in a test. You know, when we're all in church and, you know, it's such a blessing, such an honor, we, we look around and it blesses us as pastors, you know, everyone's worshiping the Lord. You see the love of God on each face. You see the intensity, the genuineness of their walk with the Lord. And that's marvelous. But what happens when we leave this place? What happens when you go home to that family member that you love so dearly? What happens when you face that job tomorrow? Are you glistening with the glow of the Lord? Or are you saying, get me out of here as fast as possible? That's our human nature. That's each and every one of us. So we have to remember God places people, situations, and things into our life to bring up the impurities that are in us because they cannot go forth with us into heaven. Think about that. The Lord isn't going to say, oh, I understand why that person made you crazy. He's going to say, why didn't you come to me for forgiveness? Why didn't you let me deal with your heart? Because truth to be told, we really wanted him to deal with their heart. And these are the impurities that have to be refined out of us. And this, in this lifetime, is when it is happening. So, let's look at our next PowerPoint. James 1.12 tells us, blessed is the man, here's that word again, who perseveres under trial. Remember perseverance, we spoke about it last week. It's steadfastness in doing something despite difficulty or extensive delay. Yeah, it's not anybody's favorite word, Debbie's saying. It means determination. It means staying power. It means you're intentional in your faith. 
When I was baby, baby in the Lord, there was somebody on a radio, and I used to listen to him every morning before I went off to work, and he would say, wherever you're at right now, it's, not too, so it's too soon to quit. Don't ever quit. Don't ever give up on the Lord. Don't ever give up on the things of God. Don't give up on the promises God has given to you in your life. No matter what you're going through, because that testing is to make us stronger. You know, sometimes the enemy literally wants to wrestle from us our own destiny. He doesn't want you to complete your destiny. He will put every roadblock and obstacle person, situation, pain, and heartache, and disappointment across your path so that you keep getting whittled down, you become tired, you become weary, you start to say things like, I don't know, why am I continuing to do this? Should I continue to do this? Because he's after your destiny. Who we are as people is not important to him. The faith of Christ that is in you is vitally important to the enemy of your souls because that's how you overcome him. We must understand that truth. Perseverance under trial is what it's all about. Now look at the word. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial for once he has stood the test. Doesn't say caved in and gave up and threw in the towel. Once he has stood the test, he will receive, oh here comes a reward, the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Could you imagine going, walking into heaven one day, and the Lord says to you, I have something for you, and it's a crown? It's a crown. Do you know that's going to happen? As a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a crown as part of your inheritance. So the testings we go through, and we're going to talk about this, have all types of rewards attached to them. That God is saying, I will reward you for what you have walked through. Think about that. That is the goodness and the kindness of our God. So James goes on to say that testing is a blessing because when the testing is over and we have stood the test, we will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Do you think God keeps his word? Amen. So we need to understand our tests have eternal purpose attached to them. Eternal purpose attached to them. That thing that you thought, I can't ever believe I even went through this, has eternal purpose attached to it. They are preparing us for a reward in heaven. A reward in heaven. But it's going to be done God's way. I have a precious friend who went through a terrible testing. And the testing was her son was a, uh, a driver, a chauffeur driver. He was sitting in his car waiting for whatever his next call was. Someone went into his car, hit him, killed him immediately. Immediately. And so how could you ever put into words the devastation that they felt? I know our precious brother and sister know that. But she was devastated devastated, traumatized. She had to work through much grieving. Needless to say, there was all types of police situations and reports. The long and the short of it is she has stayed true to the Lord. And she has let God try her and prove her. And she said, I will not give up my faith in the Lord. I don't know why this happened, but I know he's going to use it in my life. You talk about testings, testing, the faith. Who are you when the trial really comes? And so what's come out of that is that she's now being asked to minister to other people who have lost children. And God is using her very, very powerfully because she's come through. This is a period of time in her life. But she's come through to that other side. Now, who better can minister to people in that terrible trauma and heartache 
but someone who's walked through it. That's just on this side of heaven of what she's going to see. But God has a great reward for her on the other side of heaven. This is what we need to understand. God watches everything going on in your life. He sees and knows all things. And how you react to each circumstance is very important to him. Are you calling on the Lord to come into that circumstance? I shared last week that in the worst of my circumstances in life, what I have learned to do, how to get there, what I've learned to do is say, Lord, come into this situation with me. I set myself in agreement with how you, Jesus, are interceding for me. Do you know that Jesus Christ is interceding for you right now? That you will stand in your lifetime? That you will not cave in? That you will not give up your faith? The living God himself is pleading before the throne of the Father on your behalf. Because he knows who you are. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your struggles. He also knows what you've gone through and he knows what's coming down the road. And so we need to understand he's watching over everything in our life. He's concerned with every trial, testing, tribulation, heartache, disappointment from A through Z that we go through. He cares about every single one of them. Are you asking him into your trials and your testings? He watches over everything. He knows every circumstance. So why is it so important to him? Because in the midst of that trial, even as your Christ-like character is being built, there are eternal rewards attached to the circumstance. Think about this. <clears throat> God knows when we go through serious, serious, deep waters. Let's look at our next PowerPoint. In Matthew 5, 11, Jesus lovingly warned us to be prepared for testings. He said, these are his own words, blessed are you when people insult you. You're blessed when they persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you. You know the people that like to mock you, gossip behind your back, tear you down, criticize you, and spit you out? Jesus is saying, bless them. And you are blessed because of me when he says this, that when we come under insult, persecution, falsely people say kinds of evil things against us because of the Lord. He says, rejoice and be glad. Why? Because what? Great is your reward. Great is your reward. When Jesus Christ says something is great, do you think it's great? I would. Let's look at our next PowerPoint. Colossians 3, 23, 24 says this, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Not for human masters, since you know that you will receive what? An inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Do you know everything you do in your life you should be doing unto the Lord? From doing the laundry to washing the dishes to taking care of the kids, all those mundane things we all do, have done. Guess what? Do it unto the Lord. James 1.12 tells us, blessed is the man, here's that word again, who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, again, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. These are the promises of God. God is looking to give us today an eternal perspective no longer a temporary perspective of what we're walking through in life. Life is about God. Finding God, allowing him to come into your life, living for him, and by the grace of God, going home to him. It's not about all the other superficial, worldly distractions, all the carrots that the world likes to throw in our face. Dangle that carrot and we jump on it. That's not what life is about. Life is about God. 
finding him, living for him, bringing him glory, and eventually going home to him. I heard somebody say many, many years ago, you have as much of God right now as you want. Some are saying wow, some are saying amen. Because the truth is, we all need more of the Lord. Wherever we are at, we all need more of the, of the Lord. So there are eternal rewards attached to all the circumstances we walk through and the Lord that is in his heart to reward his children. Let's look at our next PowerPoint, Matthew 5.11. Jesus lovingly warned again to be prepared for testings. We read that. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. If you're being persecuted anywhere because of your walk with the Lord, you should say hallelujah. Not easy. Very painful. Yes, we cry. Yes, we go through our time of heartache and pain. Yes, we have to process through all those emotions. But nonetheless, there is a reward attached to them. Trials and testings teach each of us to trust God more than we ever have before. Think about it. You don't learn to trust God on the mountaintop. You learn to trust him in the valley. When you're in a situation that you say, oh, not this, not this, and God says, I'm with you in it. Amen. So how important is it for Christians to trust God in the midst of their trials? It's very important. James writes that we should call the worst moments of our life joyful. Count it all joy when these things come to you. Everything in us wants to scream because they, the trials help us to trust God more and more and again they have eternity and rewards of eternal rewards attached to them. Let's look on the next PowerPoint. People who trust God in their trials ask Him for wisdom and then they obey what He tells them to do. People who trust God don't blame him. We talked about this last week. For the pain and testing in their lives, they turn to him for help. Remember when the enemy loves to get us to blame God. Why am I going through this? How come nobody else goes through this? Why do I have to go through this kind of pain? You know, we, we all have an entitlement mentality. We think God owes us something. He owes us blessings. No, he doesn't owe us blessings. So we need to understand that when pain and heartache come, we have to bless God and say, I may not understand what I'm going through or walking through, but Lord, I'm going to ask you to come into this and show me the truth of who you are and what do I need to learn about myself in this. They give him credit for all that is good and the blessings he's given to them. They don't hunker down in the blame game. Number three, people who trust God look into his word and they act and obey what the word tells them no matter how they feel. I cannot say it enough times. You have to be in the word of God. If you don't know what God promises, how are you going to stand? They place God higher than their emotions and their circumstances. You know, we see the circumstance here and God down here. The truth is God is here and the circumstance needs to be under his feet. But he has to help us position it in that position. Because to us, when our feelings and our thoughts and our, our will and our circumstances all get involved, we, lose, we just lose sight and perspective of the things of eternity. People who trust God keep an eternal perspective on life. You've got to ask yourself today, do I have an eternal perspective on life? Or am I caught up in the temporary? Is everything that flies by in front of my face more important than other things that are of God? I think we're all a mix. Let's be honest, we're all a mix of that. Next PowerPoint, Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, that means whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive an inheritance 
as your reward. You are serving who? The Lord. The Lord. You're not serving other people on this earth. I hope you're not serving yourself. Maybe that's a good question. Am I serving myself? Or am I serving the Lord Christ? Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Do not give up. Next PowerPoint, Pastor Rick Warren says, here's another benefit from God knowing everything. He sees everything you do that is good and right. Every time you choose not to sin, every time you resist temptation, every time you take a stand for good because of God's truth, he sees your faithfulness to him. The Bible says every good deed will be rewarded no matter how insignificant and regardless of whether anybody else on earth sees it. Oh, how we need that. We get so caught up in telling people, this is what I do, this is where I've been, this is who I am. Self gets involved. But look at that statement. The Bible says every good deed will be rewarded no matter how insignificant and regardless of whether anybody else on earth sees it. Amen. Guess who's seeing it? The Lord. God says, I see it, and it doesn't matter who else sees it. That's our ego involved. Nothing good we ever do is ever done in vain. I love that. Nothing good you're doing is done in vain. God sees it. He gets it. He understands it. And he wants, to, he wants you to increase that. Let's look on our next PowerPoint. Malachi 3.16 tells us, Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. Do you understand? God listens to every word you're saying. Amen. Every word. So a book of remembrance, here's another book, there's all kinds of books in heaven. The book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. The Lord says, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on that day that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. God is very diligent on knowing who's serving him, who's walking in obedience to him. Now look, none of us are perfect people, but our heart needs to be going in that direction. Amen? While salvation is a gift, there are wonderful rewards given to us for our faithfulness during the time of our trials and our testings. Do we come out of our testing and trial with praise on our mouth to God? Or are we grumbling and complaining? Remember, the children of Israel did what? Grumbled, complained, and they never entered the promised land. Next PowerPoint, winding down. The Bible mentions rewards in heaven often. You'll be rewarded for your good actions, your generosity, your service, and your Christ-like character. You'll be rewarded for keeping your faith in Christ even in the midst of your trials and your heartaches. You'll be rewarded for honoring Jesus Christ in the midst of a, a fallen society. The treasures that await the child of God will far outweigh any troubles, testings, or persecutions we may face. Look at that sentence. The treasures that await the child of God will far outweigh any troubles, testings, or persecutions we may face. We can serve the Lord wholeheartedly, knowing that God is the one keeping score. You don't have to keep score of the things you're doing. <laughs> Think about that. God is the scorekeeper, and he rewards, and, will, and we will be abundantly, he will be abundantly gracious to us who believe. We can serve the Lord wholeheartedly, knowing he has the rewards in his hand. And he's keeping score. Isn't that a good thing to know? Because as we go through life, I'm sure we all have felt, nobody notices what I do. Anybody ever felt that way? We all do. 
We all do. Let's look at our last PowerPoint, Revelation 22, 12. It is significant that among the final words of Revelation, final words of Jesus Christ, Amen. Revelation, the last book of the Bible, we find these words, and the Lord is saying, look, it really means watch, pay attention, listen up. I'm coming soon, and my reward is with me to pay each one according to what he or she has done. There is a rewards dinner coming. I thought when I was working on this sermon of my two sons who played every sport under the sun as kids, and they would have reward dinners and award dinners, and before that dinner happened, they would be like, oh, I'm dying to get an award. I hope I'm going to get a... And you know what? This is go there's going to be a rewards and an award dinner for us in heaven. Amen. I wonder at the, the Lamb's dinner, that dinner that we have in heaven, if, is that where God's going to hand out rewards and awards for who you are and your faith, how you stood believing on the Lord no matter what was going on in your life. Listen, God is not mocked. God is no fool. He knows the pain that we go through. Jesus came to this earth and suffered, suffered the same pains and disappointments and heartaches. Do you think he wasn't disappointed and heartbroken at times with those fellows, those disciples that he had gathered and poured his life into, who turned against him in the moment of his need? You think he just flew through that like, oh, no worry, no big deal, I'm God, I know I'm getting through this. No. He suffered as a man. He suffered knowing what he was going to go through. He knows humanity. Scripture tells us in the book of John, he knows what is in the heart of man. That's your heart and that's my heart. But he's still willing, could you imagine, to reward us with blessings even with honors, there's many scriptures that speak about God honoring his own children, wanting to give them the best, a reward, wanting to give them hope in the midst of the trial, wanting to tell them, my presence is with you, don't give up with whatever you're walking through. I'm going to bring you out of this onto the other side. He wants to give us eternal perspective. We need a change of mind. The Word of God says we are renewed, made new through the transformation of your mind. That means you better be changing your mind because God does not think the way we think. His ways are not our ways. And then he wants to teach us his ways through his word and through his spirit who speaks to us on these type of occasions so that we start to really listen up and say, you know what, Lord? I need an eternal, an eternal perspective. I need a brainwashing. How many here would say, I need a brainwashing? I know I do. I'm just as convicted as you are. I read this and I said, you know what, Lord? I need a new, fresh, eternal perspective on every situation that I'm faced with. Not going into the, oh me, oh my, life is so terrible, it's all me that suffers. No. Life is hard. But we have a God who walks with us and says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. God hears and watches everything. Everything. He's watching over us right now. You have to decide whether you want to be rewarded. In this temporary life, God does give blessings and even rewards in this life. That's your decision. You want the glory, honor here? Or do you want to be rewarded in eternity? That's the side that lasts forever. I think all of us would say, I want eternal perspective. So let's stand to our feet. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord.
Let's just bow our heads before the Lord. Lord, we're praying for an overhaul of our minds, our wills, and our emotions. How many are saying, I need, I need that touch from the Lord. I need a transformation. I need an eternal perspective. Because you're getting caught up in the everyday perspective, the temporary perspective, and we lose sight of the eternal very easily. So Father, we just come before you, even as a church, Lord, and we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, give us the eternal perspective that we need right now. Just pray that in your own heart. With the situation that I'm faced with, the disappointment, the heartache, even the fear, even the hurt, even the wondering about the future. Lord, I need a transformation in my mind, in my heart, in my will, in my emotions. Pray in your heart, Father, forgive me for making the situation I'm in greater and bigger than you. Nothing is greater than the Lord. Everything will bow its knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the situation you're faced with right now that seems daunting and overwhelming, even that has to bow its knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we come before you and we thank you for that blood of Jesus that covers us, cleanses us from all of our sinful, selfish ways, and gives us new eyesight, eternal eyesight. Give us thoughts of heaven. Give us thoughts of who you are. Show us in your word the rewards and the awards that you have for the children of God. Thank you that you have a crown of life waiting to put a crown on each and every one of our heads. Only you. Only you would ever even want to do that. So, Father, we're thanking you in advance for what you're doing now and what you're going to do, Lord, heretofore, that we will all have an eternal perspective. And Holy Spirit, we say, remind us. Speak to our hearts when I'm losing sight of eternity. Remind me of what's important and what's not important, Lord. Let me focus on having the right heart before you, the living God. Don't let me just go off in my own justifications and rationalizations and all the excuses that we're all so used to making for ourselves. But Father, help us, help us, Lord, to say, Lord, begin this work with me. And we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hi, thank you so much for watching our show today. We pray that you were just blessed with the message that you have received. If you wish to come by and join us at our church service on Sunday, Regeneration Church would love to have you with us. May God richly bless you and have a wonderful day in our Lord.